I'm a Rundri woman, and what I should do is tell you a little bit about our people and our culture so you can understand where we're coming from. You see blackfellas today, and we're nothing like what we were before, and that was before contact. Before contact, Indigenous people lived in harmony with the land. You only ever took what you needed. Our backyard was our supermarket, our hospital, our chemist, and our university. Everything we needed, the land gave to us. We believe in the same sort of creation that the white fella believes in, like that we were created from the land. Bunjil, my God, he's an eagle. He flew over and he created the world. Then he created countries. And in those countries, he created nations. And from those nations, he created smaller countries. And that was a Rundry country, and that's my land. Our land extends along the Yarra River, to the bay, up to the Great Divide, out to just the Mordialli Creek, and then back down to Werribee River. In there we had a few other little clans that hung around. Anyway, we lived in harmony with the land, and then one day we seen these boats <coughs> coming across the shore, this is what the old people say, and they thought these people were ghosts. But after a while they approached them, but the interpretation wasn't the same on the other side. Um, the white fellows thought they were just a species of animal and sent back a message to the motherland that the land was terra nullis, that there was no human beings here, that there was only flora and fauna. So indigenous people were put on the Flora and Fauna Act and Australia was invaded and colonised by the English. I think you've really got to understand that so you can understand where indigenous people are coming from when we say the land was taken from us. When I was young, Italian and Greek migrants were coming here. Then after the war, since the war, there have been huge numbers of various migrants from various countries, and we take that as being assimilated into the whole community. We can't have a white Australian policy, and we have to open the door. Multiculturalism in Victoria means to me, well it doesn't mean that much to me because I mix with Anglo-Saxons and Celtic people, so I don't uh, mix with migrants that much. Not because out of any prejudice, just the way it is. The best things about living in Melbourne, uh, I guess the, the, the wide array of, um, of food that is available, I mean not just in restaurants but you can also go to the markets and you have the most amazing array of food available to you from several uh, different cultures so that you can actually experiment with different types of cooking, different types of cuisine at home. I believe we do need more immigrants in Victoria because this country is underpopulated and there are so many other places in the world which are so vastly overpopulated that we're selfish in the way in which we exclude people. I think Australian culture is a Western culture, essentially a Western culture. Melbourne is, is a very nice place to be when you compare it to lots of other places. Without migration, Australia would have only one race, the Aborigines. Consequently, migration to Australia has led to the collapse of Aboriginal culture. The major problems facing Melbourne people, I think, is just is that isolated. That's the only thing is being, you know, the other side of the world and not really knowing about other cultures. And really, that's why it's so important that we do have more immigrants coming into Victoria because they do offer so much in diversity. So, yeah, it's a good thing. We never really mix multiculturalism with Aboriginal culture because it's two different issues. And I don't think it will ever be the same. Like the, the struggle of the Indigenous people and our, our particular issues are far different and a far different justice to those of the, the other cultures. Like their biggest problem is, is being socially accepted by the whites. Ours is still just basic human rights. <laughs>